Hello and welcome to the Limitless Coach Success Podcast. I'm your host, Sabine Matharu, and I'm thrilled to embark on this journey with you. As a dedicated coach myself, I'm also a course creator, consultant, and therapist. I've had a pleasure to serve incredible women for over a decade through my flagship program, which is called Limitless Coach Success Formula. Now, with the Limitless Coach Success Podcast, I'm excited to extend that support to a broader audience. And we're going to explore strategies for unlocking your full potential, navigating the challenges of entrepreneurship, and achieving your success that you envision. This podcast is a dialogue, so it's a space where we can learn from each other, share insights, and celebrate victories, both big and small. Now, before we dive in, be sure to check out my podcast host page where I've added a range of incredible free resources designed to equip you with the tools you need to thrive in your entrepreneurial journey. With that said, you are in the right place if you are a seasoned entrepreneur or if you're just starting out on your path to success. And as we, what we do on the Limited, Limitless Coach Success Podcast, we'll actually redefine what it means to be unstoppable. And I have just the perfect guest for you today. Here it is Emma Gibbs NG. She is a mindset business coach, speaker, and founder of the Unapologetic Rebel. So, so super excited. Now, Emma, you can put a bit more color around the introduction in a minute. I know you help female leaders build multi six figure businesses of their dreams. And I ask you specifically today to actually leave the audience with three significant shifts that they can make today to stop them leaving money on the table and diluting their success. So I am super, super excited. Welcome, Emma, and please start with your own, very own words, your introduction. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you. I'm very excited about being on here today. Uh, so as Sabina said, I am a mindset business coach. I like to sort of see myself as a bit of an unconventional coach. I've always been a bit of a rebel when it comes to authority and being told what to do. But the reality is over the last couple of years, I lost that side of me and kind of found myself conforming to industry standards, industry pressures, mm -hmm. the shoulds, the, you know, the right traditional ways of doing life and business. And I got myself into a bit of a, a rut, uh, a confidence rut, a performance rut, a financial rut, because I was really trying to be like somebody else rather than really authentically being myself. And it wasn't really until I I do this little um, exercise with my clients and, and therefore with myself because I always teach my clients what I then do because I can't ever say to them, go and do this and, and I'm not prepared to do it. And so I often send, ask my, um, my, my friends, and peers and, and people who know me to describe me in three words. And um, I do this really because I think sometimes we can get such a skewed uh, view of who we are, we can forget who we are. And we think that we are perhaps displaying certain characteristics and, and parts of ourselves to other people, and maybe it's not being received. And one of um, my friends described me as a bit of a nutter, which, which I am. Um, not in the most lovable term, but not in the fact that I've always been quite a free, easygoing person. I've always prided myself on being quite cheeky, quite um, bantery, quite unconventional. And um, I was like, I, I used to be like that, but I don't feel like I'm that anymore. And then my dad kept diaries of me and my sister growing up and I was over with them and I said to them, Look, can I just have a look at these diaries and um, start reading it from when I was age 15 and I was very high up in the sporting world with athletics. I, I used to run at a very high standard and I was very confident and very ballsy. And, and I was reading some of the things that he was writing about me as a person age 15 and I was like, I'm not like her anymore. Where's she gone? And it was a bit of a love punch, really, because it was like, ooh, like that person has disappeared. And yet that's what I've always prided myself on being. And so that really was the start of the unapologetic rebel where I started rebelling against 
my past and my fears and the pressures and the the shoulds that I had surrounded myself around and really allowed myself to start to explore who I was again and to tap into my inner truth and from that then start to live and create my business around what works for me. And ultimately I'm now on a mission to help other women unlock that part within them because I feel that we just conform or hide parts of ourselves. My my past um, is sprinkled with sexual and physical um, abuse and fertility struggles. And I think from that, I naturally, while healing, hid parts of myself from a protection point of view. But we can get into a rut of just being an autopilot and feeling that that's just how things have to be. And I really want to be that permission slip now to show people, no, it doesn't have to be like that at all. You still get to be who you came here to be and who you were born to, to be and to use those experiences as your unique superpower that actually allows you to have the insights um, into the way in which world, the world works and how people work with their emotions and really start to use that as a powerful tool to, to transform other people's lives. Wow, that's that's a really powerful background, and and I think you 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 have you have to go through a lot, I think, to get here. What what was it the exact trigger point? Because a, a lot of entrepreneurs have a trigger point that makes them say, "Well, no more," and I'm gonna break out, and I wanna be my own boss, and really do what I love doing, or what or, or what you've overcome. Normally, you would actually take a problem that you had you've overcome it, and now you're ready to actually show the world a solution what was that for you I think it was a number of things like quite often we wait for the big moment to to be the catalyst for stuff and I think things were building and it was almost a bit like the straw that breaks the camel's back and I think I just I felt it when I was um trying to fall pregnant with my son and I then felt it again in my business where I just didn't know who I was anymore. And I was just so lost and so robotic in what I was doing that one, I was bored. But two, I just felt like I was becoming a shadow of who, who I was. And, and I wasn't proud of how I was showing up. And I think there were just things that kept coming through that were just making me feel weaker than what I actually am and and limiting what it is that I'm here to do and to achieve and so it was more just the confidence of me just dipping and dipping to the point I was like no nah, I've got to take control back I can't keep living like this if I'm for me I think it's always a, like my son is like my main motivator um, I want to make him so proud and show him how strong women are obviously he doesn't know my past um, but I want him to just see that I am someone that that can achieve anything I want, and therefore so can he. That's beautiful. Yeah, I, I have a similar sort of mission with my kids, and and I think that is a motivation, and and I can totally relate with what you said around not showing up in the best possible way, or not really doing, and and you just sort of. Have a moment in your life when you stop yourself and you're looking back and you think, actually, is that all? Yeah. I could do much better. Why am I not doing things? And and I think the last thing we want is actually getting to a place where we're on our deathbed, right? Mm -hmm. Any, many years from now, hopefully. But then we look back on our life and like, well, I didn't give it my all. And I think we would have re regrets. And we, we role model that to our children. And I think yeah. the society is also changing that my kids don't fit into the old ones and everything's moving now anyway and and that's fine and I think we need to actually show them that they they have their potential and they need to live their fullest potential so I, I think that's something that I would like to explore a bit more with you as to how how would you say you were showing up because I think we can be really vulnerable here because I think We've all been there and we're probably maybe some from time to time still doing it. So how were you showing up? And then how do you then say, well, actually, no more? How do you pull yourself out of that and gain that confidence again and know yeah. 
And when do you know it's their fullest potential? Sure. Well, when you know is is when it becomes easy. But I'm um, I'm just saying that now as a prompt for you to remind me mm -hmm. because I'm writing it down because I'm perimenopausal and I might forget these things. <laughs> um, but, I have the habit of wrapping like three questions into one. <laughs> yeah. So just remind me the the first piece. So it's like how were you showing up? That's it. Okay. So I was I was um making decisions that were aligned with what other people were doing. I was editing and tweaking my content and my offers based around other people's strategies and what works for them. I was losing my uniqueness and my sparkle because I'd convinced myself that the only way to be successful was to do things the way that other people were doing because the evidence I had was that was showing success in their world, therefore it must show success in mine. And really being very surface level. We look at what other people are doing all of the time and we take what we want to take from their journey and tell our, and tell ourselves, convince ourselves that that's exactly what we need to do in order for that to become our reality. But there are so many different layers to success. And while, like for me, while strategy and what other people are doing is, is obviously vital, what is the driving force behind that is the human behind that. And so I was just looking at surface level techniques and, and strategies and really ignoring me and not putting myself first and not listening and not trusting, not trusting myself enough to give myself a go. and. I suppose got caught up in that cycle of um, comfort, doing what I'd always done, hoping to get a different result, which, as we say, is, is that what Einstein says is like insanity when we keep doing the same thing, expect to get different results. But we all we often do that. We are like, well, if I just keep going and I keep doing it this way, then surely something's going to work. And it all it did was just drain the Bajiba's out of me. I was, um, yeah, I just wasn't voicing my my voice. I was almost like becoming a replica of of what I thought I should be, rather than being proud of who I am. I was diluting so many parts of myself because I didn't want to feel like I was too greedy or too baldy or too much or too audacious or anything like that um and i suppose you know there were fragments i guess of my past that was like you know don't don't put your head above the parapet because if you get seen there's too much attention it's unsafe you might get hurt blah 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 and so uh, subconsciously i was keeping myself just below the visible line to and convincing myself well I'm doing enough but subconsciously it was like don't get seen too much because if you get seen you're going to put yourself in danger you're going to get hurt you're going to be unsafe um and so that's really what I was doing I was just going through the motions of roboticness of of habits that were convenient that weren't right that were familiar in the hopes naively that if I threw enough spaghetti, spaghetti at the wall, <clears throat> excuse me, that something would stick. Oh, I love what you were saying. I think a lot of people are doing the same thing and I think social media is not helping or the gurus are out there teaching certain things and all these blueprints and cookie cutters. Mm. I think it's really, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a skill to actually see what's relevant to you because you already said yes strategy we need some sort of strategy but we also need to be able to see what aligns with who we want to be and how we want to create that business and still stay true to ourselves so how how did you I make say with that story yeah, that ahead, I yeah. quite a lot of fear mongering that goes on in this industry where they mm -hmm. almost convince you that if you don't do it like this then it's just never going to work and you mm -hmm. lose that individuality and what I and when you then actually get into the backstory of what 
these people who are telling you to do what their success is, they'll always say mindset and identity and refinement, yet they're selling you a totally different package. You've got to do it like this in order for it to work. And I just think, you know, it's very easy to get swept up in that, especially in the infancy of, of anything new. And you don't have the evidence around you to to create that solid conviction. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I think, yeah, it's the FOMO, isn't it? It's a mm. fear of losing out. It's everywhere, and there's so many new things every day that that we we come to see, and it's just distracting ourselves from what we should be doing. Um, I'm I'm just reading the book, The One Thing, which I can highly recommend to anyone who's feeling distracted. And I know one of the points you were going to talk about um, as well is about distraction, because if we don't do the things that are really truly move us forward in our businesses and we we don't make the room, we kind of block out the time to do that, then we will be forever just chasing shiny objects, maybe working a little bit on our website, or just avoiding the things that kind of feel uncomfortable and that and we know the things that feel make us feel uncomfortable, make us visible, step out of our comfort zone, you know, sharing our wisdom. Those things are the ones that are actually going to move us forward in our business and create true results. So my question is then how did you take this, how you showed up and how did you transform? What was the what were the, the key elements and maybe if someone was feeling like I'm in exactly this situation, what are the things that one could actually go and do? The the first thing was I found my people. I literally found my trailblazers. So I'd always been growing up in a trailblazer, a leader, um, you know, never in a, like, I've always rebelled, but in, in like the most politest way, I suppose, like I was never like super naughty growing up, but I've always been a leader, never afraid to stand up for people or to say what I was thinking. Um, and so I actively seeked out people who, could prove to me that it didn't all just have to be like this. And it just led from one person who then introduced me to another person who introduced me to another person. And suddenly I found myself surrounded by these insane women who were pure examples for me of going against the grain and not having to do it their way. And that has been totally, totally game changing, love changing on so many ways. and. It's so important for you to be mindful of the people you ask advice from, but also the conversations you're having. And I think um, I've, it helped me reframe comparisons as well, because it allowed me to get into the room and into the conversations and into the energy of these insanely trailblazery, beautiful women, rebel women and not compare myself from a negative, but really look at them and what they were doing beneath the surface and be like, it just allowed me to have that permission to unlock that in myself and to feel that it was safe because I was understood and they were all showing me that you can do what you wanna do and it's safe and nothing bad's gonna happen. And and while yes, of course, uh, with any anybody's success journey, there are gonna be judgments and opinions that don't marry up with us and might sting a little bit but that's the same regardless of what you're doing but they were showing me that that you keep moving that that it, it the more that you keep moving and keep leading yourself and keep being radically responsible and focusing on the bigger things the quieter all of that unnecessary distraction becomes and it was just Oh, it was like the biggest hug. It was like, thank God I'm not alone. Because I felt, I have felt quite misunderstood growing up. Like, because I've always been quite rebellious and didn't really like authority and being told what to do. And because of my past, I'm, I am a complicated person and not always understood. And suddenly I just found my people and I was like, oh my God, there are more people like me out there it's fine i'm it's okay for me to be unconventional um and i'm not the only one in the world that wants to do that and i think that is massive because ultimately we want to feel like we belong we want to feel like we're, we're understood we want to be you know we want to have common ground with people um 
And that's why sometimes we stay in this comfort zone so we can all go to the pub on a Friday and all moan about the same things because it, it, it creates, I don't know, like a bubble of togetherness. And suddenly I was like, wow, I've got my people who I can have a whole other level of conversation with who are opening doors and layers within me that just are igniting me and making me feel alive again rather than numb. I felt alive again. I love that. I think this is so true. It's so important to have that community and surround yourself with people who can actually pull you up and really look at who who you're interacting with because there's so many toxic people that are not not your best cheerleaders in your environment and and something that I've learned and you said that as well is like you know you got to be careful who you take advice from you know if if you know you, you're an entrepreneur and someone might say it could be a, a family member mm, say okay. well no you should be doing this way or you're doing this wrong then you look at them and you think, well, are they a six, seven figure business owner? Are they earning, you know, or are they just in a nine to five job and they, they just take a guess and they give you some advice? Well, that's probably not the best advice. But if someone who is already has already done this, achieved this, and that's your community that you were describing, mm -hmm. then that's the people that you should be looking up out and, and you should take that advice and not really act or react or get triggered by other people's opinions that will just put you down and you will lose your self-worth you'll have self-doubt imposter syndrome so we've got to be really really mindful of those um advice and opinions yeah I mean, it's like one of the things i it say is you wouldn't um learn to swim by someone who can't swim like you just wouldn't take advice from them and we take and I think the you know the family members um is common for for us all because they know us you know, on a level that no one else does they love us they want to protect us and and their opinion means so much to us because we love them and they're you know they're our family um but there is an element of wanting to please and not let them down and so we listen to them and we let their projections and their lack of experience and insights influence us and i did massively massively um and it's something i still consciously have to work on and detach from and i think it's really important to maybe hear their opinions but allow it to be a, a detached from from you and to then also be able to have your people to actually balance out what they're saying and go you know do you know what um, that's because like my husband he's employed he's in sales while well, he earns exceptional money and is very very good and can teach me a lot on sales and and all of that stuff when it comes to marketing my business he's never run his own business so why would he and it's almost unfair to put them in that position when they're not qualified to be in it yeah whereas when you find your people they're qualified to give you the answers love it yeah absolutely so Let's move into the three shifts that you promised. I think we kind of already talked about one or two things. Yes. Yeah. Well, so yeah, so one so it's three shifts, I'm just going to read it again, that you can make today to stop leaving money on the table and diluting your success. So well, one would be to, to shift what I've just said to, to find your people, to find your people, definitely. Um, the other one would be to stop getting distracted by what other people are doing and focus on the simple things which matter, which is yourself. Um, and really not rushing it, really taking the time to get intentional and getting to know you again. And I think we get swept up, like we've, you know, we've said throughout this um, conversation so far, we can get so distracted with what other people are doing. And I'm a firm believer that when we have a desire, when that goal that desire lands for us what comes with that desire is its unique package that we of, of the hows of the challenges of the obstacles that we need to go through in order to become the person that can not only achieve it but hold it and sustain it and then grow from it now when we're getting distracted by other people and what they're doing it can pull us into their pathway and suddenly we're taking on their challenges and their obstacles as well because we're following what they should be doing. But the reality is your way is the right way. 
and it's unique to you because your desires are neat, uh, unique to you and they're based on who you are, your human design, your past, your beliefs, your upbringing, all your purpose for being here. And so when we are getting distracted by what everyone else is doing, not only are we diluting our experience because we're diluting ourselves and we're trying to be like other people, we're then not attracting in our right people because we're trying to be like other people so they don't see us. But we're just slowing down the whole process. And then what comes off the back of that naturally is frustration and feeling in a rut and feeling um, like you're banging ahead against a brick wall or that time's running out or that you're doing things wrong because it just feels so wrong. And the reality is, I don't believe there is any uh, right or wrong. Um, I believe everything is happening for you. But what I do believe is if you're trying to go down someone else's path, then in, in context terms, it is wrong because we're trying to be like somebody else rather than fully embracing our own experience and what we should be doing. And so it's about eliminating those distractions. If there's people that you follow on social media that, that pull you down energetically or make you feel less than or cause you to procrastinate or to tweak or or dilute, then unfollow them. Like be radically responsible for the company that you're keeping. And if there are certain situations or there are certain people that are distracting you from that, then then be radically responsible for how you show up around them. Now, I'm not saying don't ever be friends with them again, but just be more protective over what you share, the conversations that you have, maybe mute them for a while or maybe if you know that you're about to do something that really requires a lot of courage and a lot of bravery that perhaps you don't go on their social media straight away just before you're about to go and do an interview for example or launch a program or do a live because you know that it is naturally going to pivot you and take you away from your unique brilliance so it's like if you are getting and we all do we're all humans so we're all going to get caught up in what other people are doing but rather than looking at it as, oh, look what they're doing, why are they getting it and I'm not, it's like evidence that it's possible, but focus on your unique way of doing it. When you really tap in that your way is the right way and that every desire, every goal that you have has been divinely selected for you based on who you are and what you're ready to receive right now, that's proof enough that you're capable of going through the challenges that are required. Um, but in order for you to do that, you've got to focus on you. So for me, the, the, bit, the best strategy that you can ever follow is knowing what you know to do, because we all know what we know to do. We just might not like what that, that thing is, and it might require a bit of discomfort or a bit of a challenge, but we know. So it's having the courage and the bravery to do what we know to do, but also to do what we're called to do. And that that's from the, the co-creation that I'm very spiritual of the guidance of the universe because the universe is the creator of the how, we aren't the creator of the how. So listening and following the intuitive nudges. So if one day you, you have this urge to go left on the school run rather than right and you bump into someone who becomes a client, a business partner, a future partner, a, a lifelong friend, whatever it may be, they are destined to be on that path the way you're meant to go. But if you go, well, that doesn't logically make sense. Or you share it with someone who isn't in the know and they go, well, that just sounds ridiculous. Why would you do that? Then we can get distracted. But if you follow the guidance and trust that it is, it's part of the process and helping you to get to where you want to go, then it just allows you to move more freely. And then the third part is cleaning up all the, I call it mind shit, all the, the, the crap, the ego stuff that comes to the surface that tells us why we can't do it, that that reminds us of past failings or where things have gone wrong or various things like that and working through that because these are ultimately the stepping stones to your success they are the things that are blocking you from getting to where you want to go they're not personal they're not an, an, an attack they are just they are naturally bubbling to the surface because these are the things that need cleaning up that need, need dissolving in order for you to move to that next level wow. so that would be the first one powerful the second one <laughs> is that second one okay so so the first one was find your people find your people the second one this so the second one was the not getting distracted by what other people are doing and now we're going to go to the third shift 
And the third shift is about trusting yourself and owning your voice and not not trying to be a replica of other coaches you admire and not diluting your offers, um, your content, your voice through fear of judgment and rejection. It's it's having that trust that the right people will find you. And we're not here to please everybody. We're not here to to be the answer to every single person. It's about becoming potent and magnetic and open for the right people to find us. And quite often we will still, we will energetically want to attract in new clients, new level clients, new level people. But the human in us is very caught up in the cycle of autopilotness. And so energetically we're like, yeah, we want these people. But the way in which we're then strategically taking action and doing things is we're still speaking to the old version or the old clients that we used to work with that are draining us and don't excite us anymore. And so it's really about finding, getting really intentional with who your people are, who you are, who you want to work with, the outcomes that you bring, really allowing yourself to then speak to that level problem, positioning yourself as the expert for them, rather than energetically feeling like that and hoping, but still doing what you've always done. Like yeah. we can we can look at what other people are doing, see their results and replicate it and go, right, well, I need to do this, I need to do that, without putting our unique spin on it. And therefore, we're not going to attract our people because our unique spin's not there. So we're just going through the motions of doing this. But when you really take the time, and again, I was listening to um, a training this morning, and she says a lot of people, we, we rush the marketing, the let's get it out there because we're so excited and we want the right people to come in. But we don't get super, super intentional with it. It's like getting really, really clear on who you are at your next level and therefore who you want to be attracting in. And therefore, if you want to be attracting in these people, what do you need to be showing them? How can like stop diluting your voice, stop hiding the parts of you? Because often the parts that we're hiding are the exact things they're looking for in, in their next coach, their next client. And that's your superpower. It's your superpower and you're like, oh, I feel really embarrassed and really ashamed and I shouldn't be like that. And there's someone sat there with a credit card going, I really wish that there was someone just like M who really loves rebelling and has got quite an unconventional way of doing things and has gone through the ringer herself and actually has this incredible outlook of life. I really want to work with someone like her. And I'm like trying to please someone over here who yeah. hasn't got the credit card there. They're in their pocket sitting on the fence going, oh, I'm not sure I can afford this. So it's like really trying to tap into you and own your superpower, own your superpower, because that guarantee that is the part that everyone is wanting. That's what makes us so unique. And yet we hide it through embarrassment or shame or guilt or judge, fear of judgment and rejection. And when really, when you own your truth and you own who you are and you're unfiltered and who you are, you become so elevated because everything that you do which goes back to where we were about ease how do you know that you're in that everything feels easy everything feels aligned everything feels flowing it feels fun it just feels second nature it doesn't feel forced oh this is amazing you dropped so many golden nuggets and it's this, it's a great bridge to our close because I think this is exactly what you do. You help people find their superpower and live in that authentic, rebellious, or, or, or step into this authentic and rebellious um, superpower, I would say, or, or, or way of being. So thank you so much, Emma. I'd like you to share where people can find you, how they can connect with you, and what programs do you run. And of course, we're going to leave the links on yeah, the show yeah. as well. Yeah. So I'm pri I primarily um, am on Instagram under Emma Gibbs NG, um, all lowercase, all, all together. 
Um, my website is is my name, and Facebook is my name too. I have um, an online community called Unapologetic Rebels on Facebook, so head on over if you want to come and join me there. Program wise, I'm actually running a free masterclass this Friday called Unleash Your Inner Rebel, which is really to to help you to unlock the rebel within you to to go on and to create your authentic life and business um, your way. It's very foundational. Um, and while it's live this Friday, it will be available for whenever the podcast comes out. So I'll add the link to that. And I am launching um, off the back of the masterclass. Um, my unapologetic rebel mastermind. So this is very much for the women who are working towards the the six and multi um, six figure business who really kind of want to become famous, build a legacy, leave their mark on the world, and to to create programs that suddenly just are impulsive programs. And it's like, how cool would it be to do this and to put it out to their audience? And before they finish that live call, it's sold out, and you know they're just having fun and they're they're becoming so like i say you're becoming so powerful and potent like taylor swift and so magnetic like beyonce it's like everyone you're like you're hot like beyonce like everyone wants to sit at your table be in your experience because they know it's going to be uplifting it's going to be fun it's going to be expansive and not only that it's well the the master the mastermind is very much around my unapologetic rebel signature program off the back of that, you're then building a community of rebel friends. We've spoken about the importance of being in proximity with other expanders. And so you will have your girl gang with you, your rebel gang with you along the way. And so we'll be masterminding, collaborating, brainstorming to really allow you to get safe and comfortable with tapping into that rebellious side of you, but to create your unique voice that will then allow you to go in become so magnetic and potent to your audience so i'll i'll share those links with you to be oh yeah i love that i absolutely love the sound of it i will join a master class i think everyone could do with a bit of that and i think it's really getting into the fun of things as well because then things actually really get easier in your business rather than being overly serious all the time mm. so thank you so much emma for sharing well, thank you. and fun. thank you I've enjoyed yeah it. <laughs> fantastic i really enjoy it this as well and um yeah please head over to emma's page have a look at the show notes there will be some highlights as well so thank you so much and i'll see you at the next episode bye